first time really falling. Hey, I feel like a real mountain biker, you know? <laughs> I'm Kaylee Kornhauser. I'm a PhD student at Oregon State University. I ride bikes um, and I'm fat. <laughs> Those are some facts about me. I started off doing all these big rides. I figured since I couldn't be the fastest cyclist, I would be the one who like stayed on my bike the longest. For a long time, I wasn't seeing anyone that looked like me doing the types of biking I was doing. A few years back, I ran into Marley Blonsky on Instagram, and she was out there talking about what it's like to be a fat cyclist, and she was doing the same things as me. We were both bikepacking and commuting to work, and we both always say like we're fangirls of each other. <laughs> so I met Kaylee on Instagram. Here was this woman who looked like me and was fat and was doing the same kind of biking that I was doing. We reached out to each other and started chatting about our experiences and then realized there was this void in the cycling community. Uh, nobody was really talking about size inclusion or what it's like to be a fat person who rides bikes and realize that, hey, we can contribute to this and we can make a difference. So we started working together, putting on workshops, reaching out to the bike industry. Kaylee and I talk all the time. I feel like I know her super well, but we've never actually ridden bikes together. So we've been chatting and realized we should go bike packing. The route we're going on is the Corvallis to Coast. It's known as the Sea to Sea route. When I looked it up, it's 60 miles. I saw two different elevation profiles, which kind of scares the crap out of me. Uh, the official route says it's like 7,500 feet of climbing, which is way more than I've ever done. I'm a little bit nervous because it's more elevation than I normally do, but it should be really beautiful and we'll end up at the ocean, which is really exciting. One of my favorite things about bike packing and bike camping is it can really be accessible to whatever level you're at. For example, for us, we're doing 60 miles, which to me, I think is gonna feel pretty hard but I know there's folks who ride this route in one day and they might see this and say, oh my God, you guys made it look so hard. You know, you're walking up all those hills, but you know, there's no one right way to ride a bike. And I, I love that about finding adventure in your own backyard. That's kind of the thrill of it. To be a cyclist, you just have to be a person riding a bike. <laughs> That's what I think. Being fast is not what makes an experienced rider. I have pretty much not ever gone that fast in my whole life, and like, look at me, I'm on a movie. So. <laughs> People associate negative feelings with the word fat. People think that fat means lazy or ugly or undesirable, but really fat just is a descriptor of our bodies, and so I try to use that word just to describe myself and take the word back and what it means about my body, but leave those negative associations behind. We all have some self-doubt inside, and when society at large tells you you're ugly for what you look like, it can be really, really hard to even get going. You know, as humans, our bodies are meant to move. We're not meant to be sedentary. But it also, like, doesn't matter what size you are. Like, everybody's meant to move. So keep it in snow. Funny tent to set up. So often, like Marley and I are kind of at the back, getting left behind, and nobody is with us. Um, like I'll be miles behind my friends, kind of like, huh? I wonder if they're <laughs> gonna wait for me ever, you know? And so it's nice to just be with somebody all day. Like there were very few times we were out of sight, just feeling like. We're in it together, you know, and talk about like challenges that we have. This thing isn't gonna go together, is it? There were ups and downs, literally and emotionally. And I'm learning that I feel stronger than I thought I was, even though like some of the climbs felt really hard. Um, my body still feels, feels pretty good right now, even though if I had to go like five more miles, I'd be like, nope, I'm done. 
it's not easy, you know. I think people get emotional and personal when they talk about their bodies, no matter what size body they have. And for me, it has pretty much been a negative relationship uh, until recently. I, I thought of it as something that limited me um, and something that was holding me back. Like if only I was uh, in a smaller body, people would treat me differently. Or if only if I was in a smaller body, this, this person would like me that doesn't like me. Or somebody would take me more seriously. Or I would look so much better in, in that outfit. From a really young age, I remember being larger than my friends and always with the goal of trying to change that to trying to be the same size as them. And I really just thought like, why is it like this? You know, no matter what I eat and what I do, for some reason my body is like doing this, you know? You don't even control what you eat, um, but for some reason you've done it wrong. And so that like sucked. <laughs> Sorry. Like. That kind of was shitty. <laughs> I don't wanna cry. When I went to the nutritionist, they like take blood and they have you write, you know, what you eat for like a week or something. And at the end, I remember the nutritionist told my mom and me that what I could do was eat less apples in a week. That was like the suggestion. You know, that stuff like hurt and hurts still. I probably wouldn't have had like as many negative thoughts if adults hadn't been feeding me these negative narratives. Really excited for today. Yeah, me how are you too. feeling? Excited, curious about how my butt's gonna feel when I sit on this. I didn't really sleep last night, so I'm really nervous about how my body's gonna do. It's gonna be interesting. Hopefully no, not too many tears today. Or whatever. I don't like... You don't like tears? No. <laughs> Ugh. Oh, better than I thought it'd feel. Thanks. At least for me, being outdoors brings so much joy to my life. It's where I feel grounded, it's where I feel most alive. I think there's this tension between wanting to accept my body for what it is and accept whatever journey my body takes me on, and then wanting to push my body further. I stand in this tension because for me, the motivation to cycle as a way to lose weight was not a healthy way for me to approach cycling. For a long time, I used cycling as, I call it a form of punishment because I thought it was gonna make my body smaller and I was starting to really restrict what I was eating. I was just so hyper-focused on that. That was like my singular goal. I was eating so little that I was like lightheaded, dizzy. I knew I was like getting close to this really dangerous edge. There was some strong part of me that was telling me like, you have to punish yourself like this so that you have the body that you're supposed to have. I went to a doctor's appointment and I said like, I'm only eating this much a day and I'm working out every day. Why am I still fat? That nutritionist pretty quickly was like, you know, you have been practicing disordered eating. We spent some really hard sessions talking about why I had been doing that and why I thought my body needed to be smaller. I started thinking critically about how I was treating myself and thinking about myself. You start to really question, why do we think it's better to be thin than fat? Like, why have we associated all these negative things with fatness? And it's so hard trying to like push back against that and say, I'm not gonna accept what everybody tells me is the ideal in myself or in other people. The world's telling you one thing, so to accept yourself is to, to maybe tell yourself a totally different narrative than what you've been taught. I think it's like a constant battle that you have to try and fight every day. For me, biking helps a lot. 
There's so much more to a person than their weight or their waist size. Our personalities, our values, what we believe in, and learning not to put so much stock in like how I look today, because that doesn't make me who I am as a person. I'm not out here to fix my body or make it look a certain way. Like my body might change, but it might not. And the primary reason that we go is to have fun. Where do we go from here for this conversation? I think that's really what me and Kaylee are trying to figure out. Let's band together and change the narrative for the next generation so that they don't have this shame and this stigma. And I want people to feel empowered that they can ride a bike wherever they want to go. I think there's about to be a really big movement happening and it's really exciting because fat people, we're just, we're done hiding. Uh -huh.